Now we have to figure out how many grams of excess reagent would be left. So who, who is the excess reagent here? Sulfur. The sulfur. So now we have to convert into sulfur. Um, and I think you set up a good conversion for that. You've already figured out that, um, well, we can actually extend that on to where we are. Well, we figured out that we're using 0.5 moles of iron. No. Let's just go back to here. We can go back to our original conversion. Couldn't you, uh, I guess, uh, knowing that the old uh, ratios were 1 to 1 to 1, that I just used the product to find out uh, what my ex, the, the, using the product for conversion would give you the excess rate as well. I think that makes sense. Okay. Uh, because these are all one to one conversions. So, yeah, that's fine. Um, instead, though, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this to one mole of iron for one mole of sulfur. And now we have to convert into sulfur. So we have one mole of sulfur is how many grams of sulfur? 32? So this should give us this number. Now, 28 goes in 56 twice. And 2 goes into 32 16 times. Now, where does this number go in our table? Um, it goes in the end column. In, Pardon? In the end. Does it? Where does this number go in our table? Where do the numbers that oh, we're doing the change? I'm sorry. Yeah, we've seen that the starting information and the target information from our stoichiometric coefficients always refer to the middle row. Yes. They always refer to the changes. So uh, in this case, normally we don't put grams into the table, but I'll do it this time to clarify things. So we're using up 16 grams of sulfur. Good. Now, which of these cells in the table was the question asking us for? Not the end. So this is, this we should have done this at the start. We should have put a question mark in here. You guys might have noticed that when I set up these problems, I usually put a question mark in the right cell of the table. Well, I should have mentioned that's something that you should be doing on your own when that's not given to you. You should start the question by putting in a question mark to indicate what the question is asking us for. Now, I think that originally you thought the answer here was 16, but we can see that's not right now because that's the wrong cell of the table. So you almost made it, but not quite. So what calculation do we have to do now to find this cell? Any suggestions? Uh, I don't really know how to tackle it because I'm not used to seeing grams in the, in the table. So it's true that normally, um, so we can't use the stoichiometric coefficients here because this is grams, but we can still just use common sense about the table. What was the question asking us for? How many grams? All right. Well, we definitely have enough information to answer that now. How many grams will be left? Zero of the. Uh, oh wait. Zero of the limiting reagent. Yeah. But the question is asking us how many grams of the excess reagent will be left over. Well, it take twenty-eight minus sixteen. Yeah. So, like I said, we can just do some common sense at this point. What number is this? Yeah, 28 grams. Okay, um, so what number should this be? Uh-oh. Uh that, that seems right, but that's not what the answer is supposed to be. Uh, how did I go wrong? So... Yeah, what number should I put here? Oh, excuse me. 24. Yeah, 24. All right, we always got to double check our work. Yep. Notice how just one little mistake can throw everything out of kilter. It's really frustrating during the test. Those little the differences make a big difference. You always got to double check your work. Under time pressure especially, people make mistakes. Okay, so what number is this? There we go. Okay, now you're right to be a little uncomfortable about putting grams in the table, but what this means is we can't do stoichiometric coefficients based on these. We can still say that the starting amount minus the change equals the end, so we can still use the table to figure that out. Um, so the answer here is going to be uh, 8 grams. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, this problem. This is a really good practice and a very important skill in the test, which is focusing on the question. Um, because if you don't focus on the question, you'll waste time figuring out stuff you don't need to. For example, 
Um, I think when you were working through this, you were trying to figure out the number of grams of iron sulfide we would be producing. But that just introduces unnecessary calculations here um, because they didn't ask us about the product directly. So it's good enough to figure out the limiting reagent in terms of moles. And then we can convert from one reagent into the other reagent. So we have to focus on what the question's asking. Um, you guys were mentioning that when you were practicing this, you were writing down start change end tables. That's great, but were you putting question marks into the start change end table? That's a really good habit to be following. Uh, like I said last time, the way I've been writing these problems on the board is what you should be trying to imitate in your own work, um, down to really the minor details. Sometimes I forget to point everything out, but everything I'm doing on the board is from painful experience of mistakes that I've made in the past. So everything I'm doing on the board is something that I've had to develop to avoid making mistakes. And one mistake I make a lot is answering the wrong question. So to avoid that, I've got to put the question into the table so I know what I'm trying to answer. And that's a good thing for you to be in the habit of doing as well. And, and uh, possibly, if we had, uh, I know on some of your other, other videos, you stressed the importance of putting the uh, substance. Yeah. And possibly, I might not have. Uh, yeah, made, although I, even I made the gram error. Yeah, even I, I wouldn't usually put the yeah, substance yeah, here because yeah, it should be obvious it's sulfur. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that might have helped us from making this mistake. All right, but my main piece of advice there is whenever you write a number down, your next step should be to check that number. Now, I know people don't like to do that during the test because you've got so much time pressure, you don't feel like you have time to check. But really, you don't have time not to check. Mm -hmm. Because if you make a mistake, it just takes, slows you way down. Everybody makes mistakes during the tests. The difference is some people expect to make mistakes and, check, and, and catch them. And other people just hope for the best. Well, hoping for the best doesn't work. You've got to try to actually catch those mistakes as you're going through that. That's an important thing I think a lot of people don't realize. Um, some people, people that aren't really all that good at math or all that good at science, they kind of think, well, the people that are really good don't make any mistakes. That, that's not true. Everybody makes tons of mistakes. The difference is that the people who are good are good because they expect to make mistakes and they're checking for those mistakes and they catch them a lot of the time. But everybody makes mistakes as they work through these problems. Uh, you, you're under time pressure, but you have to do the best you can to check your work as you're going through. These videos are offered on a pay what you like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.